Because you seem you, you you write so much about where you come from, the East End of Toronto, and those characters that are in your head, does that mean there's a social, I don't say conscience, but a social drive behind it? I just don't want them to be written off. You know, I just don't want them to be forgotten. You know, this notion that everyone's doing okay. You know, this notion in none of these uh, political debates that you heard in the states or that you hear here. Do you ever hear the word poverty? You know, the word food, food bank. Yeah, you know, you know what they're talking dealing with poverty. People who are not professionals, people who are trying. You know, I got you know I uh, got the. Uh, I just think we don't get we don't have it right about who we're kind of honoring in this society about you know what what's going on about who we're paying attention to. It was a big deal for me. I got the Order of Canada, and I didn't want it. I, I just didn't want it at all. And uh, the family's a bit upset about it. They're quite upset about that I didn't want it. You, know? you were going to go? No, I didn't want it. I still haven't gone. I still haven't been invested. I got it. I just let them do it. But I haven't gone to be invested. Not because I, I snubbed them. I, I do also have a social anxiety disorder, so that comes into play. But I didn't really want it. My, 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 you know, and the family said, your mom and dad, my, they're dead now. They would be so proud. All that stuff. So I said, okay, I'll take it. But mostly I didn't want it. And I actually said this to the, when they called. And said, I said, well, you know what? Can you not give it to the single mother in Regent Park who keeps her three kids off drugs? And find out about those people. I know they give them to good you know, volunteers or people who do stuff. They don't just give them to artists and stuff like that. But there are people just getting up day after day after day after day and going doing something really horrible to feed their family. And just, can you just investigate some of those people and give them the award and put them on the fucking paper? You know, I just feel like a fraud going down there and going like, a, I, the only award I've ever had that I really, really honor I, it's, and put up is uh, we, Danny and I, my co-writer on Wonderland, we got an award from the Schizophrenic Society of Canada right. for our treatment of mental illness and television. Right. And I thought, okay, I've finally done something useful in my life. <laughs> After all this time, there's something of value. I've so so you said, finally, you've done something useful in your life. You've made people laugh. You've made people cry. You've made people see absurdity. <laughs> you've locked your place. I know. You but you know what I mean, Robert. Useful. It's there, right? Schizophrenia and how it's been mental and how it's been treated on television. And the schizophrenic society full of the most, some of the most anguished people on the planet. You want to be, you know, go to a friend of schizophrenia meeting and see the most damaged, higher harmed people in the world, you know, there's no answers, there's nothing. And they're used to seeing the bullshit that's there, you know. So we got in that and I thought, well, okay, uh, that, they honored me and I, I felt great about that, but the rest is just kind of like, I mean, I don't get me wrong. So does that translate into political push? I mean, you, if you say those voices of Toronto and Canada are not heard and they should be heard and they should be honored. Well, I, I just, it's that, um, it's on that level. I then mean, why can't we just acknowledge these people? I mean, why are they, uh, they, it's like they're written off. You know, my wife taught for a while literacy in Toronto and uh, in, in Regent Park actually was, uh, when it was all there, some of it's probably already gone now, but she, remember, she had a, a woman that she was helping learn how to read, you know, she's uh, uh, in her 30s, she had three kids. And it transpired, this was a woman said to her, I, there, were like, there are parts of this city that I don't feel welcome in. And Susan said, well, what, 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 what part? And she said, Young and Bluer. I don't feel welcome at Young and Bluer. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what I mean. I mean, how can you not, you know, it, it was before even Young and Bluer, it's like it is now, like Fifth Avenue, like it's running. It was just sort of, sort of a bit fancy, not that fancy. You know, the Bay was, you know, she didn't feel welcome there. And another time she said, well, they were watching TV because it was one of the ways, you know, to like, anyway. And there was a girl on commercial, a commercial, and the woman says, oh, she's so cute. And said, your, your daughter's that, like, she's like that. She's smart and alive. She could do that. She's like, and the woman said, oh, no, she would never be allowed to do that. She would never be allowed to do that. We, and then another, we could never find a way into that world, you know. That's all. I just don't want these people to kind of, like, you know, be f forgotten or, or dealt with. Cause, and partly, I mean, I just wrote a, a sequel to a play I wrote about, 15 years ago called Tough, and this one is called Moss Park, and it's about two working class kids. Are, um, they're pregnant, they've, they're separate, because she's not man enough to kind of like take part in this thing, but she's pregnant again, because in a drunken night they got together one time, and now she's pregnant with her seven kids. She's talking about, should she get an abortion, or what should she do, and, uh, and they're talking a lot about who they are. And because he can't find a job with plain clothes, and he can't find anything that he's good at. You know, he's working in a carpet store, binding mats, remnants, he can't find anything he wants to do, and he's afraid of, anyway. So I'm just thinking that, uh, and she tells us about 
abortion. She talks about her great grandmother and, uh, and her sister having had an abortion, you know, and being killed by a back alley abortionist, you know. And then at another time, uh, he talks a story about his, uh, or a story he didn't even know that his, his mother told, but his grandmother and uh, having twins and one of the babies died. Now, this is actually from my family, this one, where this was my grandfather. Uh, one of the babies died, and they were so poor. He took the baby, wrapped in a blanket, to an undertaker. And he didn't have any money, he went to some pain time, and the guy wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it, so he had to get on the streetcar and take the, the kid, this dead child, all the way back across the city. This is in your family, this is your family's story? My family, yeah. And then, and I said to my mom, this would be his, her little sister or brother at the time. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, I, I, I think they buried it in the backyard, because they said, no, no, you can't do this. Anyway, the, the girl in the story says to her, this boyfriend, these are our stories. This is who we are, you know? We have to tell them. We can't be, because he's thinking about crime, he's thinking about, he's, he's done a little lookout for guys doing breaking and he's doing, and she says, you can't. First thing, she entertains it, and she says, no, we can't do that. Because then our grandchildren will be talking about us, this couple of losers who couldn't do anything except break and enters, you know? And we've had those people in our families do. So it's just about that. It's about being close to it and close enough to it uh, that I'm embarrassed by anything too much accolades or anything like that. I'm just embarrassed by it because I've seen how hard in my family and with all that stuff in the back. And also there's lots of people still out there.